Welcome to this online service for David's United Church of Christ in Canal Winchester. Today is December 26, 2021, the first Sunday after Christmas. We are worshiping online from home today to give our staff a much needed respite. But we continue the joyful celebration of Christmas with this worship service. Next, sing along with us with Christian Friends Rejoice and Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Good Christian Friends Rejoice with heart and soul and voice Now you hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting all. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, hope means to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, With joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Singing birds and flowing fountain. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Every year, Jesus' parents traveled to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. 
When he was twelve years old, they went up as they always did for the feast. When it was over and they left for home, the child Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. Thinking he was somewhere in the company of pilgrims, they journeyed for a whole day and then began looking for him among relatives and neighbors. When they didn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. The next day, they found him in the temple, seated among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. The teachers were all quite taken with him, impressed with the sharpness of his answers. But his parents were not impressed. They were upset and hurt. His mother said, Young man, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been half out of our minds looking for you. And he said, Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I had to be here, dealing with the things of my father? But they had no idea what he was talking about. So he went back to Nazareth with them and lived obediently with them. His mother held these things dearly, deep within herself. And Jesus matured, growing up in both body and spirit, blessed by both God and people. Merry Christmas, friends. I hope you are enjoying a wonderful holiday with family and friends and loved ones and able to share in all of your favorite Christmas traditions. I pray that this is a season in which you feel God close to you in your heart and mind and your spirit. And it is a season in which we are able to rejoice in the love of God and the joy of God coming to be with us in the form of Jesus, in the form of the Bethlehem baby, God sharing God's love with us so visibly. It is a joy to be with you at this Christmas season, and I am glad that you have joined us for this online service this morning. Did you know that Christmas is not just a day, but a season. No, I'm not talking about the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas Day, but rather Christmas tide is 12 days from Christmas Day to Epiphany Sunday, when we celebrate the coming of the Magi of the wise men to see the baby Jesus. And so we are invited to continue in our celebrations, to not put away the Christmas tree and all the decorations just yet, but to continue our celebrations as we continue to welcome the Christ child into our midst. And so we keep Christmas, not just for a day, but for a season, and indeed for a lifetime. You know, in this past Advent, we looked at the book, The Redemption of Scrooge by Pastor Matt Raleigh. And Charles Dickens says that after Scrooge had been transformed and redeemed in his meeting with the three ghosts of Christmas, that he knew how to keep Christmas and to keep it well. So we think that on Christmas morning, Scrooge knew how to keep Christmas, that new day when he first understood the true meaning of Christmas. But also, we can imagine throughout the rest of that character's life. When I think of keeping Christmas, I am reminded of the author and minister, Reverend Henry Van Dyke. He was an early 20th century Presbyterian pastor in New York City, the pastor of Brick Presbyterian Church. He was even the pastor of Mark Twain. He also served as the ambassador to the Netherlands as a friend to President Woodrow Wilson, as a professor at Princeton University, and the author of the words of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, which was so beautifully sung by the Jacksons. But what is important to me about Henry Van Dyke, especially on this Sunday, is his essay, Keeping Christmas. I first became aware of this essay over 20 years ago. As a young person, I attended the Methodist church in my family's old neighborhood with my grandmother. 
And around that time, my parents and sister began attending the Congregational Church in our neighborhood. So a few days before Christmas Eve, at the church service, my pastor read Keeping Christmas by Henry Van Dyke. At the end of the service, she had copies of this available as Christmas gifts for the whole congregation. And I specifically remember they were printed on green paper and tied with a little ribbon. So I took a copy for myself, but also one for the pastor of our congregational church. And so I took it and I placed it on my pastor's desk without a note on Christmas Eve. I recall the Christmas Eve service as our pastor, the late Reverend Philip Mayer of blessed memory, as he got up to preach, he said that he would not be using the text that he had prepared for that evening, but rather would be reading from Keeping Christmas, which he had found on his desk. And so this is a special memory for me, but also Henry Van Dyke's reflection on Keeping Christmas stands true so many years later. And so I share with you this reflection from Henry Van Dyke. It is a good thing to observe Christmas Day the mere marking of times and seasons when people agree to stop work and make merry together is a wise and wholesome custom. It helps one to feel the supremacy of the common life over the individual life. It reminds a person to set their little watch now and then by the great clock of humanity which runs on sun time. But there is a thing better than the observance of Christmas Day, and that is keeping Christmas. Are you willing to forget what you have done for other people and to remember what other people have done for you? To ignore what the world owes you and think what you owe the world? To put your rights in the background and your duties in the middle distance? and your chances to do a little more than your duty in the foreground, to see that your fellow people are just as real as you are, and to try to look behind their faces to their hearts, hungry for joy, to own that probably the only good reason for your existence is not what you are going to get out of life, but what you are going to give to life. To close your book of complaints against the management of the universe and look around you for a place where you can sow a few seeds of happiness, are you willing to do these things even for a day? Then you can keep Christmas. Are you willing to stoop down and consider the needs and the desires of the little children? to remember the weakness and the loneliness of people who are growing old, to stop asking how much your friends love you and to ask if you love your friends enough, to bear in mind the things that other people have to bear in their hearts, to try to understand what those who live in the same house with you really want without waiting for them to tell you to trim your lamp so that it will give more light and less smoke, and to carry it in front of you so that your shadow will fall behind you, to make a grave for your ugly thoughts and a garden for your kindly feelings with the gate open. Are you willing to do these things even for a day? Then you can keep Christmas. Are you willing to believe that love is the strongest thing in the world, stronger than hate, stronger than evil, stronger than death, and that the blessed life which began in Bethlehem is the image and brightness of eternal love? Then you can keep Christmas. And if you keep it for a day, why not always? But you can never Keep it alone. Friends, I hope that this day, this season, and always, together you and I, can keep Christmas to keep the spirit of this season 
alive in our hearts and alive as we share the good news of Jesus Christ with our world. Glory be to God indeed. Amen. Brothers and sisters, receive now this blessing. May you go into this week knowing that you have seen the glory of God, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome it. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you this Christmas and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.